what is up? Welcome to the race recap. This isn't connected to anything. Last weekend, I ran my first half marathon in one hour, 42 minutes and... 28 seconds. <laughs> one hour, 42 minutes and 28 seconds, which if you've been following along with my journey, it was kind of a big deal for me. To make a long story short, I had a baby rather unexpectedly and my big goal postpartum was to run a half marathon. Maybe we will do a separate video digging into my running journey and just what this meant to me, but there will be no crying today hopefully, because we are getting into the nitty gritty of how I ran a sub 145 on my first half marathon. So I ran the Toronto marathon. No, you didn't. <laughs> Starting the video with a lie. I did run the half marathon on May 5th, but leading up to this, I did two 12 week training cycles. So about six months of programming with a few weeks I got bumped because of life happening. Now I had not done the math on this until this video, but I actually went back through my training logs and my watch data and going into these training cycles. So before I started half marathon training, I was running two to three times per week and averaging 10 to 15 miles. Postpartum running was a challenging journey. During my first 12 week training cycle, I aimed to run three times per week. And based on my watch data, I was averaging 18 miles per week. Now, during the second training cycle, I did get more consistent with my training and averaged 22 miles per week. I will say running these numbers was humbling because it felt like a lot more miles when I was really struggling. The plan I followed for the first 12 week training cycle was my friend Kim, Track Club Babe on Instagram, highly recommend following her. She's very inspiring and just a lovely person all around. I followed her fast half level one plan. Then for my second 12 week training cycle, I went rogue and did my own programming based on where I found my running was lacking. So during that first training cycle, I was running three times per week. Then during the second 12 week training cycle, I was doing three to four runs per week. Every week I focused on one to two easy runs, one speed workout and one long run. Now I did prioritize quality over quantity. I lift weights three times per week, then sprinkled in mobility and functional core training in between. Now every workout I did is in the team plans app because I film them in real time with you. So if you want recommendations for a plan to support your running, I will put some more info in the description box down below. Now I didn't have a half marathon goal until the week of the half marathon. I had some ideas, but I did not have any firm numbers. And there are a few reasons for this. There is definitely a term for it. Am I feeling this part in? I don't know. Can we call a therapist? Call a friend? I like to think she's my friend. Um, But definitely avoidance. That is part of how I deal with stressful situations. Prior to starting these training cycles, the last time I'd run the half marathon distance had been the Spartan Beast in October 2023, which while it was technically a half marathon, it was through mud, up a literal mountain, across obstacles. There was a lot of starting and stopping and walking and hiking and doing all kinds of things. So I knew that that time would not translate to road racing. And then the only other time I'd done it recently, it was a long run the weekend before the Spartan Beast that I had done to just put my mind at ease that I could still run a half marathon. And I completed that in 2.03.15. So a sub two hour half marathon felt like a good goal to me. And once I started training, my body was responding well to the running. And after a few speed workouts, it's not like they were easy, but you know, things were progressing. So I started to think, okay, maybe like 150. I ran a 10K at the end of March. And I think that's when a switch really flipped for me because I was pushing, but I was not all out racing. Don't get me wrong. There were many weeks in half marathon training where I was barely hanging on. But I think the big difference after running that 10K was that I started to believe in my ability, which was a very funny feeling because I'd spent so many years trying to get into running, never really doing it consistently. So it was only in the final week of half marathon training, literally my taper week, that I felt ready to set a goal time. My heart said 140, my 
brain said to keep it rooted in reality so i went with a range of 140 to 145 i mean 145 is my safe goal 140 i would be over the moon like jumping up and down I tried a few calculators online the one that i found most accurate was the jeff galloway galloway i don't know how you say it one what am what am i saying jeff Galloway magic mile calculator. I'll link it below, but the idea is that you put in your one mile PR and then it estimates your pace and finish time across the most popular race distances. So in order to use these calculators, you need to know your one mile PR, which brings me to an important realization I had about this whole journey. And that is that there is a difference between running versus racing the half marathon. In order to run a half marathon, you have to be able to complete 13.1 miles on your feet. Whereas in order to race it, that assumes that you can already run it. Now you're adding speed and that's gonna require more fitness and a more strategic approach to training. In general, when it comes to programming, whether it's weightlifting or running, you don't want to progress too many variables at once because that's going to increase your risk of injury. So for example, you don't want to be trying to run a lot further and a lot faster at the same time. The beauty of the one mile time trial is that with a bit of running experience, most people can attempt this with relatively small risk. And once you've got that baseline established, you can then use structured speed training to improve your ability to hold it. Before the start of my training cycle, I feel like I was still building up to being able to run 13.1 miles comfortably even though i'd run it before it was just running it again and again and again to get that confidence ingrained in my brain and so because my focus was mileage toward the start of my training cycle my speed workouts were a lot shorter they were shorter intervals they were less intervals then as i progressed through the training cycles and i was more confident at that mileage i started extending my speed workout so i started doing one mile and two mile repeats tempo runs fast finish long runs making sure i was getting comfortable at race pace over an extended period of time flash forward to taper week the week before the half marathon this is where the wheels started to come off from a training standpoint i did everything right the whole purpose of this week is to keep your body moving but you are just smooth sailing, maintaining all of the work that you've done while reducing fatigue so that you can peak on race day. Of course, this ended up being my pre-period week. And while I am grateful to have a regular period, it is regularly terrorizing me. Doesn't matter how great life is going. My anxiety is like that emoji. It's just increasing there. Add to that that I have IBS, which is well, yes, which is well managed most of the time. Jeff and I have been joking that we should make merch for the IBS girlies. It's like I be shitting. That's that's honestly, that is what the acronym should be because I felt like I could not eat anything the week before my half marathon without like I you like you get what I'm saying my heart goes out to you IBS girlies who are also doing the running but obviously eating is important to running so the fact that I had terrible anxiety I had no energy I would like to eat so that maybe I have more energy but everything I ate was just going right through me not good the start of last week was very discouraging. It may have been more discouraging because I knew I was doing everything right and it just felt like my body had betrayed me. Luckily, my symptoms started to ease up toward the end of the week. It truly felt like the sky was clearing after a storm. I had a good cry, a solid, hard, girl in a music video cry on Thursday. Um, it was actually very poorly timed because I was at my desk. I thought I was in a safe space. I was on my own. I was listening to some moody music. And then down comes Jeff. Just, I don't even know what you were coming down for. Were you just coming to visit me? I came down and I got a drink and I was happy. And I thought you were happy. It made it worse that he was happy. <laughs> I just wanted to be sad on my own. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wanted to like, I, the thing is, I wasn't even sad. I just feel like I'd had so many feelings last week that had been bottled up. They had to free flow. And his happy attitude was in the way of my flow. You made me 
made me feel terrible. <laughs> I told you, it's not, like, it's literally not about you. After the good cry, I was ready. I was race ready. I had energy. I had a new lease on life. So race day arrives. I had my million alarms set around the room. I woke up on the first one, 5.30 a.m., made my coffee, went to the bathroom. Everything was going perfectly. I was not anxious the morning of. I was happy, I was at ease, I felt peace, I felt gratitude, I felt great in my body. So I guess in some ways, I'm glad that all my PMS symptoms kind of front loaded during the week. I had my pacing strategy, the bags were packed, Jeff and I were on the road exactly when we needed to be. It was raining. I think when we first stepped outside, it was just kind of like sprinkling misting. Yeah. And the forecast said, gray weather on Sunday. So. I had done my hair fully, I had had a shower, I had washed it, I had blow dried it, I had straightened it, I had got it very pretty under my cute little new Lulu hat so I could get the aesthetic, you know, 0.5 picture of the hair flowing behind you. It was, it was gonna be a gorgeous, beautiful time. Yes, so we then drove to the start line and I had on my windbreaker, I actually was wearing these pants, these are joggers that I just got, they're so comfy. The weather was not looking promising. We got out of the car, it was misting. Not a great sign, but we still had time. Went to the porta potties, did the business. Proud of myself for getting there early enough to use what? It, it was an accomplishment. Did I have time for my warm up routine? Absolutely not. I have not actually, in my history of recent racing, I think we have had one race where I've done a proper warm up routine, but then they started late. Yes. So I have not warmed up properly for any of my running racing eventually maybe anyways once we got done at the porta potties we found not like a little corner but a little ledge beside a wall an area that was kind of tucked to the side where i could start taking off my layers start kind of getting in the mindset reviewing my pacing strategy just getting ready because we didn't have a ton of time before we needed to line up at the start this is when it starts pouring and keep in mind i was already a little chilly but i thought i'd have time to do my warm-up routine it was going to be fine i had my cute little outfit i planned it the night before it was going to be a t-shirt with like a little crop and the blue and then the black and then the blue and then the black on my feet it starts pouring not a great thing when you're trying to get hyped up and trying to be warmed up and have your muscles feeling good to do the running but it's it's fine i mean at this point it's not like i'm gonna leave i'm doing the half marathon i put on my merino wool base layer took off then put back on the windbreaker we walked over to the start I I had some second guessing. I was like, Jeff, should I wear the windbreaker for the half marathon? And you told me absolutely not, which was the right call. Went into the starting corrals. And at this point, it's not that I didn't care, but it's just, there's nothing to be anxious about anymore. The start is here. The day is here. Here we are. We're in the gear. It's raining. I mean, what else can happen? I guess there could have been a thunderstorm and they could have canceled. God's plan now. God's plan. So here we are at the start. I'm in my corral, which allow me to add, um, is called the, I was in the competitive wave for people with times between 135 to 147, which was also intimidating, but there was nothing left to worry about at this point. We started the countdown. It was it was going to be my time to shine. I thought it was crazy that it was 10 minutes between the waves. Yes, so they got us very excited. I thought it I don't know what was going on. They got us, they got us very excited. So there were the two like elite, very fast waves that were before my wave. No, it was just one wave. Okay, so maybe they consolidated them because there were two online. But anyways, there was the first wave of runners who went out at the start and I thought they were just gonna kind of send them out, like give 30 seconds, line us up and redo the start. But it was like 10 minutes. So we were just standing there in the pouring rain, vibing. I mean, at least it was pretty tightly packed. So people's body heat kind of helped. Now I had a pacing strategy that I had carefully planned, carefully put together earlier in the week. This is how I broke down my 10K race. And that was a very successful race for me. Um, so I did the same thing. I broke it down into kind of mile by mile chunks. Here's the pace that I'm gonna aim to hit in that time. Here are the visual cues, the mantras, all of that that I was going to focus on. I am somebody who really likes visualization. I'm not a huge mantra person, I wouldn't say, but having visuals is very helpful for me. So the visual that I had for miles one and two or the notes I had for myself were be in a warm up mindset. You are running with Jeff on the treadmills in the garage, which I've already told Jeff this, but we have two treadmills side by side in the garage. And before his workouts, he's been getting back into running, but we will do our running warm ups together in the garage. And it's not like we even do anything that crazy like we're just chit chatting but it's something that i really like it's very comforting and enjoyable for me i feel like i'm explaining the most mundane of things we put the hair up you know we're getting serious it is a very comforting 
visual and feeling for me. So having that in mind as I'm allowing people to pass me and as I'm allowing myself to find my breathing and relax into my rhythm of speed, I thought that would be helpful to me. As we go through the half marathon, I broke it down into two to three mile chunks at a time. I had little checkpoints, I had little goals. Now, what ended up happening in reality is that this course, I did know it was supposed to be a downhill course, but I thought what I read was that it was a relaxed, scenic, downhill course. So I thought, okay, maybe it'll be from start to finish. There's technically a decline or elevation loss. Wrong, because right out the gate, I'm tempted to say within the first mile, there was a massive downhill. So that put a bit of a wrench in my plans because when I looked down at my watch to check my pacing, I was just above a seven minute mile, which was absolutely too fast to be starting the half marathon with. I stayed controlled, I stayed relaxed, I let people pass me because that was part of my strategy. And I was feeling okay until I looked in front of me and thought, oh, that big hill coming up, we can't possibly be running that. I mean, they advertise this as a scenic, relaxed downhill course. Wrong again, we are running up the massive uphill now. This is an uphill that was probably longer than that first downhill that I ran. So up the hill we go. And now when I look down at my watch, I'm not I'm not panicking, I'm soft panicking, okay? Like I'm, I'm halfway to panicking because all of a sudden I'm up at an 8.30 pace, which is way off from where my half marathon pace needs to be. And I did not account for, I don't even know how to account for those types of hills in, in my pacing, in my strategy. So I just did my best to keep a relaxed and calm mindset and remind myself that A, I'm not gonna be running uphill forever. B, my effort will need to increase in order to run up this uphill. And C, don't do anything crazy. Now is not the time to sprint. Now is not the time to go into overdrive. You need to get to the top of this hill as steady as you can, recover quickly, and be ready to get back on race pace. So that was quite a surprise that early into the course. In the future, I will definitely investigate the courses a bit more, but that continued for probably the, at least the first half of the course. So a lot of my pacing strategy didn't actually apply to what I was experiencing. Most of my training had been done on flat terrain or terrain with much smaller changes in grade. So while my pacing strategy had me easing into the half during the first two miles, then buying back some time on the next few miles as I was relaxing into a fast rhythm, that didn't really happen. I was going fast on the downhills. I was not letting my legs go all out because I didn't want to fatigue my quads or my knees, but I was allowing myself to go quick. And then I was keeping that same mindset on the uphills of, okay, I need to lift my effort. It's not going to be forever. I will recover. And there's probably going to be the reward of a downhill after where I can win back some of this time. So that really helped me, even though I hadn't experienced these challenges in training. The next obstacle came probably about halfway into the half marathon. And basically I looked down at my watch to check my pace and my watch was reading an 11 minute mile, which clearly I was not running an 11 minute mile. So I just kind of kept doing my thing because I had heard people say before that sometimes you can lose reception. I found it a bit weird because I was in a major city, but maybe it's the buildings. I don't know what, right? A few seconds later, I look around me and everybody's looking down at their watch. It looked like probably a lot of people were experiencing the same thing. So at that moment, I decided I was just gonna try to hold pace with the people around me. I'd been with the same group for the past couple of miles. We'll probably hold a similar pace. And when I did check my mile split, when I was back in reception, if anything, it looks like we may have been running a bit more quickly. So it wasn't a big deal at that stage where I started to really struggle was around the nine mile mark, which was a bit confusing to me because up until that point in the race, I had been hydrating, I had been fueling, I'd been gradually taking in my gel, my stomach was feeling great, my body was feeling great. I had been holding a fast but relaxed pace. I was on the pace. I was not going crazy on the downhills. I was not going crazy on the uphills. 
I was running a very controlled and I thought a very smart race. And I literally trained to be able to pick up the pace around the nine or 10 mile mark going in, even though a lot of things had not gone according to plan. I'd really hoped that I would be able to flip the switch and race the last 5k. At this point, the course had flattened out. We were obviously the half marathon group, but we were starting to catch up with some of the slower marathon groups because they'd started before us. So there was a new mix of people. We were more in the city, bigger buildings, less greenery. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what was going on with me mentally or physically. Like I'm just trying to figure out why it felt like all of a sudden I wasn't feeling great during the race. We were running under an overpass and my watch cut out around this time. Now it was a very unfortunate time because I really felt like I needed the feedback of my watch. My effort just felt so much higher than it had been. And I wanted to at least see some validation of, oh, you're running really fast and maybe you can relax your pace. But when I came back into reception, I was not running really fast. I was running right around an eight minute mile, which was discouraging because I felt like I was working really, really hard, but we're like, now we need to still pick up the pace. And that's picking up the pace to my goal average pace, not even racing the last 5K. So mentally I was not doing great. I was dreading reaching the 10 mile mark because that was where I would, as per my original plan, be picking up the pace. I just didn't feel like I had that in the tank. So. I made it to 10 miles. I decided, nope, we're not ready to increase yet. Let's just hold this pace. Let's not lose ground here. And then if you get to the last mile, then you can do like a one mile time trial. When I say I was miserable for miles 10, 11, and most of 12, mis miserable. Not able to pick up the pace or start passing people like I had trained, like I had wanted to do, like I had visualized doing. Anyways, I got my brain together. Once I passed mile 12, once it said 12.1 on my watch, I said, okay, Abby, don't care that you're tired. We've got one mile. You've done this a million times. Let's just put a little kick in it. Let's not sprint, but like, let's get those feet turning over. Where's your form cues? Where's your mantras? Where's your visuals? Let's go, go, go. I was going as good as I could, but it was absolutely not my best. I felt sloppy. I felt sluggish. I was not very fast, but the real kicker was when I was looking at my watch, I'm like, okay, we're really coming up on the finish here. We're really coming up on the finish. Where is the finish line? Why am I not seeing the big banner for the finish? Hey, finishers go here. Looking at my watch, see, the 13.1 aka you just completed the half marathon distance and realizing we had to turn a sharp corner run up one more uphill one more uphill literally an uphill finish the audacity the audacity in that moment the way that I was legitimately angered mad frustrated, ready to throw hands because I absolutely was not throwing my tired feet. Brutal finish. Would have loved if we could have finished in a straight line. If I could have had a visual on the finish before this wretched turn that they put on the course. We made it and I was so happy and so relieved when I crossed that finish line. I finished the race, obviously. I was on cloud nine when I finished because A, I was done running, but B, I also beat the not only the high end of the goal time range I'd set, I was sub 145, but also based on the magic mile calculation, which I think was somewhere in the 143s for me, I also beat that time. Even though I had a very frustrating final few miles that I did not feel fast on, I felt sloppy, I felt like I didn't feel like me. Am I happy with my result? Absolutely, I'm happy with my result. Am I happy with my performance? For the first part of the race, Yes, for the final portion, no. So I will absolutely be doing more fast finish long runs during my next half marathon block of training. One other thing while we're airing grievances is the fact that the distance on my Strava and my watch it is not 13.1 miles does irk me a little bit. So I am counting the official, obviously half marathon clock time as my half marathon time, like 
that's me now, but I am going off of the pace as per my watch that I'm not wearing right now when I'm setting paces for my next block of training. As for what's next, I can tell you I'm not running a full marathon because we have got work to do. We've got to master speed at the shorter distances before we scale that up. So I'm very excited to share with you how I'm switching around my training to focus on building speed. I will be running a one mile time trial sometime soon. I've not set a date yet. I'm a bit nervous for that. Um, but I do have some races on the calendar that I will share in the coming weeks. If you made it this far, this was such a long video. Like I am parched from talking this long, but if you made it this far, definitely let me know what you're training for. If you are running, if you're training for another goal, if there are any events you're training for, let me know what's going on with you. Let me know where you're on your journey. Let me know if you can relate to parts of this journey. Check in with me. My camera is running out of memory, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.